I would like on your behalf to thank the society here for inviting us uh, to spend some time to know about uh, the society itself, to know about their activities, uh, and to be able to enter into a dialogue uh, with you. Uh, the group here is a group of teachers uh, from the state of Pennsylvania, from the United States of America. And uh, they're coming uh, uh, to Egypt for four weeks uh, to understand Muslims through the Egyptian lens, through the Egyptian perspective. Uh, and uh, we've met so many different, uh, uh, we've visited so many different places uh, from Aswan to Luxor and we're in Alexandria. In two days we're going back to Cairo and we're meeting lots of different uh, people. I, I do thank you uh, for your efforts to make this possible and I hope this will be a very productive dialogue that we all can create a common uh, ground uh, that we uh, can exchange ideas about the future of our world. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is in, uh, in, in English means uh, peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be uh, upon each and every one of you. My name is Mahmoud Hagazi. I'm a board member of this society. Uh, and if you're surprised by my accent, I've lived in the States for many years. <laughs> uh, uh, I have here a distinguished panel. Actually, uh, we have uh, Sheikh Saeed Hamad who's also a member of our society. We have Dr. Mohammed Sabri, who's the chief executive here. And we have uh, Mr. Ali Izzet, who's the uh, 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 vice principal, or the, the uh, vice president, if we could say. And we have Brother Eid, who's an uh, imam in a masjid of, uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. And we have uh, engineer Sharif Arakshi, who's also a member of our society here. And uh, we welcome all of you. Uh, I'd like to leave you now with a brief word uh, from Dr. Mohammed Sabri who is our president of the society. In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, and the peace and the blessing of Allah on the Prophet Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. On behalf of 80 million Egyptians, we welcome you in Egypt and in the conveying Islamic society. Egypt is and always the country of peace and Muslim nation. Egypt is the land of most religions and divine revelations. Most Musa, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them, have a relation with Egypt in one way or form. Islam basically is submitting to God and doing good deeds and forbidding committing sins. Thank you for your attention and I will leave you to the rest of our friends. Uh, now we have a little word uh, from uh, Mr. Ali Izzat. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Welcome to the Conveying Islamic Misses Society in Alexandria, Egypt, which was established in 1929 by the efforts of engineer Muhammad Tawfiq. The primary reason for establishing this society by engineer Muhammad Tawfiq was the fact that he noticed during his foreign assignment in Germany, Switzerland at that time that many people in Europe and the West have many misconceptions about Islam. Hence, he wanted to correct and clarify all these misconceptions by showing that Islam is a religion of peace. In fact, the word Islam itself is derived from Salam, which means peace in Arabic. And it is also one of the Allah's, Allah's name. We at the society now are currently and have been in the past adopting and implementing the same policy and method of conveying the message of true Islam to the world. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we have uh, a word from Brother uh, Sharif al Rakshi. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and may the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Distinguished guests, 
Welcome to the Conveying Islamic Message Society, CIMS. We are concerned Muslims united by our belief, monotheism, with conviction in the Noble Quran, being the last revelation from Almighty Allah, God, to mankind, revealed to his last Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Sunnah, injunctions, laws, and practical examples of the Quran in action, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the righty guided predecessors, the family, and the companions of the Prophet Muhammad and the successive generations. CIMS, our society, have many Islamic sites, such as islamicmessage.net, islamicinvitation.com. There are seven objectives of our site islamicinvitation.com. The first objective is inviting non-Muslim members to Islam. The second, correcting the misconceptions and wrong stereotypes about Islam and conv conveying the right concepts. The third, providing religious support to new Muslim converts and educating them about Islamic practices. The fourth, educating Muslims in a variety of languages about the Islamic faith and manners. The fifth, preparing Muslim individuals from different countries to invite people to Islam. The sixth, spreading Islamic knowledge. The seventh, deepening Islamic concepts and values in the minds of the Muslim. Islamicinvitation.com allows you to, be, to do a search throughout all the books listed in about 104 languages. We have books in our site in 104 languages. This site contains about 739 books. Uh, the total books read till this moment are about, 30, about 345,000 and downloaded by about 209,000. The Islamic library contains 13 Islamic TV channels, five Islamic radios, 122 videos. Uh, the statistics till now uh, from United States, those who visited our site, about 16.8%, Egypt 10%, United Kingdom 6.6%, India 4.3%, and so on which means that the majority of uh, our visitors are from the United States. The library also contains the translation of the Noble Quran in 59 languages. Uh, the book, Brief Illustrated Guide, which uh, you have it now with you, we have the translation of this book in uh, 31 languages, uh, and other books such as Women in Islam, translated into 23 languages, The Life of the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him, translated in 23 languages. We have also children area, presentation and flashes, friend sites. We ask Allah, we ask Allah most exalted is he to accept our efforts, which, do, which we do only in seeking his absolute pleasure. And we ask his forgiveness for any mistakes or misunderstanding we have made due to our lack of knowledge or ignorance. We pray that Allah Almighty record this effort as a good deed done in defense of his religion, Islam, and only for his pleasure, and that he may, uh, re and that he may accept our efforts. We need it most and our, overlook our shortcomings and cover us all with his mercy in this world and purify us for the hereafter. Peace be upon you, and so may the mercy of Allah and his blessings. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'll just say a, a short word, and then I'll leave the, uh, the word, uh, final word for Brother Imam Aid. And then, uh, as I'm sure most of you have questions about Islam, and you know, uh, then we've retained most of the time we spent together here in answering your questions. So uh, we'll open the forum to questions as soon as we, uh, Brother Aid talks. Once again, we welcome all of you to the conveying of Islamic Message Society. I was asked by the brothers here 
to express their warm greetings to each and every one of you. I hope you've had a good trip coming here. And Alexandria, by the way, is considered by many people as the princess of the Mediterranean Sea. It has gone through a major overhauling and has been transformed in the recent years into a great coastal city visited by millions of tourists every year. As briefly indicated to your good selves by my brothers, Islam is a religion of peace and love. It was never a religion of, of violence or terrorism, and the teachings of Islam manifested in the, in the glorious Quran and the authentic teachings of the beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never condoned or approved violence. It is very sad that Islam would be judged by many in the West as a violent religion, uh, based on the irresponsible actions of just a few uh, Muslims who misinterpret certain teachings, uh, certain Islamic teachings about uh, jihad, for example. Egypt has been a, a Muslim country for 1400 years now. Yet, one major aspect to show and indicate the tolerance of Muslims towards non-Muslims living in Egypt, that currently at least 5% of the Egyptian population are Christians, living side by side with Muslims, sharing their joy and sorrow, living in harmony and peace together. We at the society here, we made up a small flyer, we called it the message of truth. Basically designed to show the love and mercy in Islam and to help many in the West to better understand the true message of Islam and to dispel any misconceptions about it. Along with it, we have websites, as the brother indicated, um, such as freequran.com. When anyone actually logs on and requests a free Quran in any language, they can get it. We distribute and, and, and send books and Islamic materials in 104 different languages to almost every country on earth. And, and like we said, our main objective is to bring people closer to the true and beautiful religion of Islam. Uh, thank you, and I'll give uh, Brother uh, Aid the Bismillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-anbiya wal mursaleen. I begin in the name of Allah, and we ask Allah to send His peace and His blessings upon His Prophet Muhammad. And I thank you all for coming here today to understand what actually Islam is. And this is something which is very, very important because many times. We want something, we strive towards this thing. And we want to know about this thing in order for it to benefit us. And this is the most important thing in our lives to know, okay, we are Muslims, we are Christians, we are Jews, we are different denominations, different religions. But we are seeking now to understand each other and understand the truth and accept the truth. Not only understanding but also accepting the truth. Because having understanding with no acceptance will make no sense. But when we understand, and then we accept what we understand to be truth, then this is what makes the understanding to become something that has sense in it. And all of us here, we have a purpose in life. But it's for us to seek to find out what this purpose is in life. And every single one of, one of us here have a single purpose, as which we'll get into in a few minutes, inshallah, in God willing. As I would like to ask, is there anyone of our honored guests here that do not believe that there is a God? Nothing is wrong with this if, if this is your belief. You know, don't feel ashamed to say that you, know, you want to show your hands. You can show your hand. Is there anyone that do not believe that there is a God? Well, then this is a great step, firstly. <laughs> it's a great step to show that everyone actually believes here that there is a God. This is a great step. The next step is, how many gods do we think that there are? All those who say that there are five gods, let me see their hands. All those who say there are four gods, let me see their hands. All those who say that there are three gods, let me see their hands. All those who say that there are two gods, let me see their hands. All those who say that there are one god, let me see their hands. Every single one. This is very good. 
So now we have the equivalence in something. Because as Allah mentioned to us now, what is our purpose? As Allah mentioned in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah said, and we have not created the jinns, the jinns and mankind, excepting to worship me alone. That we have not created the jinns and mankind, except to worship me alone. Now the jinns, they are creation that were created from smokeless fire, we call them spirit. Because I was, I was also uh, a Christian, you know, this is for your information also. I accepted Islam at the age of 10 years. When I was 10 years, I accepted Islam. So the jinns, we knew them to be, why was it in, in Christianity, as the spirits. And then we know mankind to be, as us, the human being. And as Allah mentioned, I have not created the jinns and mankind excepting to worship me. So every single one of us here, we have a single purpose, a single goal, a single aim, a single direction. The next step is, how are we going now, inshallah, to gain this, what we are going after? Because it's like this, if you want to be a doctor, you will go to school and study for 8, 9, 10, 15, 20 years. From the beginning to the end. You want to be an engineer, you will do the same thing. Because why? You want to get to the goal. Now the goal here for all of us is that we should worship this one God. Because if it is that this one God, He is the one that gives us our sight. He is the one that gives us our sense of smelling. He is the one who gives us our sense of hearing. He is the one who gives us every single faculty that which we use then isn't this one God and one God and one God alone deserve to be praised and worshipped and Him alone? Because how it is that I will take up this and give it to my brethren in front of here and after this, He will tell him, thank you. This would not be right. If I am the one who give him this, He will tell me, thank you. Because I'm the one who give him something. Not the one who gave him nothing that you will say thank you to. So it's the same thing. If this one God and this one creator had give you every single thing from your birth to your life and the next life, he'll give you every single thing, then he is the one and the one and the only one alone that deserves to be worshipped and praised and no one else. We agree to this? She has shaken and saying, yeah. <laughs> so you agree to this? So then we agree that no one else should play any part worship with this one God who all of us anonymously believe in before we put our hands up and we said we all believe in one God. So we have to agree now that this one God and one God alone, he has the right to be worshipped. And we can't worship his angels. Like to worship angel Jibreel, Gabriel, or to worship any other angel, we cannot also worship his prophets. Because we know that he, God Almighty, the same one God we all believe in, he sent prophets. He sent Abraham, Moses, Jacob, Isaac, John, Jesus, Noah. And the last of them was Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He sent all these prophets. What was the purpose he sent these prophets for? To establish the evidence against us. To establish that he, God Almighty, had conveyed to us the message that which he wants us to live by. But he has never sent these prophets in order for them to be worshipped. Not a single one of them. He sent these prophets, all of these prophets, from Noah to the last of them. Noah to the last of them was he, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He sent them only to be obeyed and only to be followed, not to be worshipped. But what happened is that we were misguided somewhere or the other and misled somewhere, as we say, somewhere down the road to believe that we can worship the God Almighty and we can also worship the prophets. This is why as Muslims, we do not worship the prophet at all. We reverent, we honor, we respect, we love the prophets. 
But we do not worship none of them, not even the last of them. Who brought the last and final message? Which he, Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. We do not worship him. We worship the one God who sent him. And it was for us also to know that we believe in Jesus Christ also. But we believe in Jesus Christ also as a prophet who was sent by the same one God. We believe as the Jews also believe in Musa, Musa Moses as a prophet. But we don't believe that Moses has to be worshipped. But we believe also that Moses was sent by the one God in order to be followed also. So we have to have this common belief that the worship of the one God, this is the first and foremost thing we need to establish. And we need to eradicate any form and any sense of worship to anyone except in this one God and one God alone. And as time wouldn't permit me to go into many things, but I will try to be a little brief in this statement, inshallah. Because when we claim now that we believe in this one God, and we accept this one God, we have to understand the way that this one God has ordered us to worship Him. Because it's like the second pillar in Islam. The first pillar, pillar in Islam is to believe that there is only one God, that God Almighty is only one, and He alone deserves to be worshipped, and to believe that Muhammad is His last and final messenger. Then the second pillar of Islam is a salah, the prayer. So immediately, once all of us here, we agree to that there is only one God. The next thing we have to ask ourselves, what does this one God want from us? And as I have established before, that Allah mentioned in the Holy Quran, that he has not created the jinns and the mankind excepting to worship him alone. Now we have to ask ourselves, how do we worship this one God? And if we go back, as I mentioned before, as I was also a Christian before, and I used to read the Bible, and the Bible stayed many places where Moses, he fell down on his face and he prayed. The Bible stayed also where Jesus, he fell down on his face and prayed. It mentioned also where Elijah, he fell down on his face and prayed. Moses mentioned before, he fell down on his face and he prayed. So if it is that all these prophets, the reverend, the one God, they worship the one God in one manner, which is to place their face, which we honor the most, especially the woman we spend. The woman they spend like 10 hours in front of the mirror to make sure you know, that they can go outside and the face is well pretty up. <laughs> the men also make sure that the face is looking all nice and all that stuff. So they spend some time in the mirror, but not like the woman. And we know the prophets, they, are, they were all better than us. And they placed this face on the ground and pray. Now when did this worship change? This is the question. When did this worship change from putting your face on the ground and praying to praying in some other manner, in some other way? Who taught this way? Because if all the prophets were doing this, even Jesus, is established in the Bible, even Jesus, peace and blessing be upon him, he also prayed with his face down on the ground. Then, we have to ask ourselves, why, those of us who are not praying with our face on the ground, why are we not praying in the manner that which Jesus prayed, the manner which Moses prayed, the manner which Elijah prayed, the manner which Jacob prayed, the manner which all the prophets had prayed. Why are we not praying so today? And then we have to look towards those who are praying so today and then get to the foundation of how we're supposed to worship this one God. Now, as I mentioned, I don't want to take too much time. So now, inshallah, I would like to pass the microphone to our Sheikh, our Sheikh Saeed, who will actually enlighten us some more and he'll be willing to answer a lot of the questions, inshallah. I thank you very much and I appreciate your coming here and I hope that we will uh, accept the truth in any way from anyone. The moment is the truth. Thank you very much <laughs> and I, I appreciate you coming here again on behalf of the, on behalf of the society. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Abda bismillah rahman rahim You are welcome uh, to our uh, home and your home also. 
Uh, I hope that uh, you can understand uh, my English. It may be not uh, good, inshallah. It will not be so bad. Yani. I'll start with uh, the first uh, opening chapter uh, in Quran. I will read it uh, or recite it in Arabic to feel uh, uh, I'd like to uh, get, get your feeling about Quran, which is the most important book and which is the book that we believe that is was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via uh, Angel uh, Jibrail to our Prophet Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Peace upon him. And I hope that I can uh, give the translation of this uh, first opening chapter. And also I hope that I can also recite the most gracious uh, ayah, which is ayat al-Kursi. To feel uh, something because sometimes we wouldn't like to uh, talk to you via the left portion of our mind, which is the portion of analysis and, and thinking. I'd like to go to the uh, portion of the right side of the mind, which is uh, related to the emotions and to sensations and also to uh, what we can say, uh, imagining. Uh, I think this also some way to feel with us uh, how can we feel uh, the sweetness of Quran and uh, if you look at the Quran and I invite myself and all my uh, uh, friends that are contributing us to start to have some self study and to read Quran and the uh, translation of uh, Quran and also uh, one of the books of hadith which is uh, uh, the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I think uh, uh, reading these two books, uh, the Quran and the books of hadith which is, are the saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will shortest uh, way to know what is Islam if you would like to uh, have some details because uh, this uh, you see a uh, meeting uh, is, on, is only something that you have some overview or some outlines but we hope to if somebody would like to have or to know the truth I, I think he has to go deeply to read uh, deeply and to ask uh, some questions uh, to clarify uh, what uh, these things that are making some distributions or uh, uh, some disturbance or some uh, confusion to uh, the people. So I'll start uh, if you uh, uh, any, uh, allow me to uh, read uh, the first opening of Quran which is called Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, Al-Fatiha chapter, which is the opening chapter. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Malik yawm al-Din. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال Amen. The translation is, in the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, all praise and thanks are Allah's, the, the Lord, of the Alameen, which is mankind, jinn and all that exists, the most gracious, the most merciful, the only owner and the only ruling judge of the day of recomp recompense, i.e. the day of resurrection. Is it right? Resurrection. resurrection. You alone we wor worship and you alone we ask help for each and everything. Guide us to the straight way. 
guide us to the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace, not the way of those who earned your anger, nor of those who went astray. I have a story. I had been in France since about 31 years, at 1978. I met a French guy. Uh, he was about 25 years at this moment. He is now maybe 55 or 54 <laughs> years old. I was about 29 years. I met him in uh, a place uh, near to Garde List, which is the uh, station, uh, underground station of uh, the East in uh, Paris. I was astonished that he introduced, introduced himself that as a Muslim. I asked him, how uh, did you start to be a Muslim? It was very, uh, he told me that if uh, he didn't tell me that, <laughs> I, I don't tell this story because it is very, very something which can admire any uh, guy. Yeah. He told me that I was a Christian, but afterwards I was thinking about how can I worship a man who is sleeping, uh, talking, walking, uh, eating. So I left all the religions and, and I became, uh, which is called in English, some who is not uh, have any, uh, yeah. he has no, he, no, he doesn't believe uh, at this time in God. But he asked himself, uh, is it possible that there is a God? He said, it is possible and it is not possible. It can be, it cannot be. Uh, 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 it, it can be... Uh, uh, this uh, universe has a God, a God or not. So he asked himself this uh, question. If the universe uh, has a God, who will lead me except him? Who will guide me except him? Uh, when I read this, Ihdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim, in the Hadith, Qudusi, Ya Ibadi, or my slaves, or uh, my uh, servants, Kullukum dalun illa man hadaytu, fastahduni ahdikum. Everyone is misguided, and you will not be uh, have the right way, uh, except if you ask me to lead you to the right way. Uh, he tell, told himself, "Oh Allah, if you are existing, please tell me that you exist, because no one will lead me except you." He has what is called in Arabic al fitra. He uh, believed that who will lead him only. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need and I think everyone need of us this uh, uh, moment of sincere and of uh, asking himself the truth by what is him himself, the inner. You see, so uh, this is, was very, very, as, يعني, what you can say, uh, 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 astonished me. He was sleeping and his tongue is, you see, is moving. And he couldn't uh, uh, stop the tongue. And the tongue is saying to him, Sevray il exist, Sevray il exist. In Arabic, innahu haq, innahu mujud. In English, I think you know it. Sevray, uh, he is the truth, or, and is exist, he is existing. So by this way, and by this sincere, and by this feeling in himself, in himself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can lead him, he believed in God. He was very, very uh, uh, clever. He asked another question to Allah who now believe in. He asked Allah, please God, you, I know that you are existing and you are the truth. Please lead me to the way. I thought about this when I recited the Quran, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم, صراط الذين and Amta alayhim. We need this truly. We are to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope that to make the translation again. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, sirat al ladina and Amta alayhim. Guide us to the straight way, the way of those on whom you have bestowed your grace. I hope that I can uh, yani, uh, I, that, uh, send a message to uh, all the people. Uh, in this room. Uh, the, uh, another uh, 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 phrase is uh, Ayatul Kursi. 
so far. I will recite it in Arabic and then in English, and I try to have some uh, translation for the meaning of uh, this uh, gracious uh, or the uh, very high uh, level of uh, Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا I think it's better for uh, uh, my brother Eid to have the translation a bit be, be better than me that you can. In the name of Allah, Allah, none has the right to be worshipped but He, the ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtakes Him. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? He knows what happens to them, his creation in this world and what happened and, <clears throat> and what will happen to them in the hereafter. And they will never encompass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills he extends over the heavens his throne extends over the heavens and the earth would exceed be full of mischief oh sorry um i went accustomed the arabic is going to one side no one's <laughs> going to the next sorry for this uh, extend over the the heavens and the earth and he feels no fatigue, no tiredness in guarding and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope that I uh, send a message to all uh, the people. And I think this is enough uh, because I uh, uh, know that there are some uh, questions you may uh, need to uh, ask uh, our uh, friends to us. If anyone uh, has any question, please feel free to ask. I'll stand up to ask. Um, I know that there is an Islamic system of banking based on Islamic principles. And what I'm wondering is, is there something similar in Islamic teaching about gaining wealth from investments? Because I'm thinking about the modern world in which many of us, you know, have our retirement funds invested. And are there any teachings around moral or less than um, savory investments and benefiting through them? Thank you. It's a very good question. I'll, uh, I'll please allow me to uh, translate. Okay. Uh, thank you for this, uh, your question. Uh, uh, you are asking about how to make some investment uh, after retirement or uh, generally how can uh, somebody make some in investments in, in the Islamic system uh, if you look at uh, the system of Islam there is uh, 
a lot of books and a lot of scholars uh, that were involved in uh, uh, introducing and uh, 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 explaining the way how can somebody uh, invest. There is a lot of uh, books and the rules, there are some main lines. And if you uh, have some, uh, you see, uh, now uh, time to look at the Islamic uh, way for investment, even in London and in Singapore, in Malaysia, and uh, in Gulf P, uh, countries, now there is a lot of Islamic uh, banks and uh, Islamic insurance. And uh, this depends on uh, uh, that sharing uh, between the uh, man or the guy or, uh, uh, that uh, has the money and the uh, bank. It is not uh, uh, depending or uh, on the way of that uh, you have some uh, fixed uh, uh, percentage. Ah, the, uh, it is uh, some kind of partnership. And uh, the prophet in Islam uh, uh, there is no profit. Yeah, and be, uh, uh, I mean that there is nothing in Islam that you keep some money in the bank to take, for example, seven percent per year or ten percent. It is uh, forbidden in Islam. But in Islam, you can take fifty or seventy percent if you have the uh, the benefits like this. So the share is according to the uh, agreement between the uh, bank or uh, doesn't matter bank or some in uh, we can say uh, association that make deal with you and make some uh, what we can say agreement and uh, you ask to invest in for example uh, uh, in buildings in uh, agriculture in uh, industry and by this way you can have more than that can be like the fixed uh, percent of uh, this only a general way but uh, I think uh, if you would like to have more details you can look at any Islamic site uh, and to uh, look at the uh, you see the uh, sub menu of for example uh, commercial uh, articles or uh, what you can say finance and so on you will have a, a complete answer of the Islamic uh, uh, commercial uh, system or uh, finance system in Islam. I hope that I give uh, some uh, brief... Uh, is it clear or... Uh, is it okay? Good evening and thanks for your time. Um, I am a committed Roman Catholic and as about as certain about my faith as probably some of you are. And my job as a teacher isn't really going to be proselytizing, but to teach mutual respect. What do you think would be some of the most important messages I could give my students, who are probably many of them as a certain about their faith as I am, how to respect Islam and not feel threatened that Islam, for example, is a threat to their own strongly held beliefs? Thank you. Please allow me to translate as he talks. Okay. The, the, the basics in Islam is the, the Quran, the glorious Quran, and the Sunnah, what we call in English Sunnah, which is what it means is the authentic teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, the sayings, the authentic sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. So, for one, actually, to be able to give a true and a convincing message, an understandable message of Islam, he has to always refer. To those two main sources, the Quran and the Sunnah. Quran, the Quran and the Sunnah, they're both divine revelations from the Creator, Allah, you know, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, uh, and in, in the Quran and in the Sunnah, there are multiple verses, there are numerous verses actually, which explain that Muslims have to be honest, have to be sincere. 
you know, have to be good towards others, have to be loving of others. And, and, and like I said in, in my earlier uh, speech, that Muslims can never condone any violence, any hate. A Muslim actually should never hate anyone or anything. Okay? And, uh, and so, so for people actually to get the true meanings and true understanding of the religion, and for students in, in your class and in your school not to be threatened by the religion of Islam, obviously they'll have to understand uh, clearly and truthfully what the Quran and Sunnah says about how Muslims should conduct themselves you know, towards others. One of the examples, actually, of which which are uh, clearly explained in in the Quran and in the this this example is from the Sunnah, from the teachings of the Prophet, is is uh, for example uh, an example about buying and selling in Islam uh, between a buyer and a seller. Actually, the, the the seller of any good should clearly indicate any uh, uh, defects in, in in his goods, okay, and uh, and, uh, and and should clearly indicate. And he has to be very transparent and honest about what he sells, and 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 of course tell the truth about the goods. If if he does so, and then and then the seller buys the goods as such, then Allah subhanahu wa taala you know places his blessings on this on this trade. If not, then this trade actually will never be blessed and will be hated in the eyes of or in the sight of God. This is, uh, it's another example, actually, uh, but which, which in a way uh, indicates the, 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 uh, 
the, uh, the prophecy which Prophet Muhammad uh, received through divine revelation. Uh, one, one, uh, one example uh, on, um, through which he clearly uh, asked people to do what's good and to forbid from doing what's bad. Uh, he gave an example of, of people actually who are in a ship, in a twin decker ship, you know, that has two levels. You know, uh, the people actually who are on the bottom level were, were thirsty and they wanted to drink. So instead of asking people in the upper level to, get, to give them water and, 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 and to go up and give them water, and so they were lazy, instead of going up and getting water, they figured they'd dig a little hole in the bottom of the ship to get the water. It's easier not to, so, so as not to burden the people upstairs, you know. Uh, obviously, at this, this was 1,400 years ago. At this time, the, 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 uh, the, the ships or the boats at, at the time of the Prophet were only simple boats. There were no twin deckers. So obviously, this clearly indicates this is a, this is a, a divine revelation that he received from the Creator himself. He said that if, if, these, if the people upstairs would have told the people in the lower level not to dig a hole in the bottom of the ship to, to get the water, and they would have asked them to do what's good and to forbid from doing what's bad, they would have saved themselves and the people in the, in the bottom level. And otherwise, by digging a small hole in the ship like this or in the boat, it would definitely sink. You know? So uh, the, the Prophet was not a naval officer, the pro you know, but, but, but obviously it shows that he received a divine revelation explaining that people actually, when, when one person sees another person doing something wrong, he should tell him not to do what, you know, what's wrong and, and to tell him to do what's good. One of, the yeah, one of the challenges um, I think that your organization faces is, like in the West, there are organizations that are and people who are anti-Islamic, and they cherry pick. They pick out verses out of context, which people could do in the Bible or any scripture, and, and make it look menacing. And I think that that's probably one of the biggest jobs you would have, is when you see these things thrown out, to have some kind of a context you know, being scholars of the Quran and of the Hadiths and the Sunnah, that to, to see that in its bigger context. And I think also, um, well, that's that's the job that we, that's one job that we share, and, and one job you could help us with. And, and, it's a brief question, if you allow. Uh, you see, some, a lot of people, European and American, they read about Islam and they entered Islam. And when they came to our, uh, you see, society, they said, Alhamdulillah, that uh, thanks to God that we have known Islam before knowing the Muslims. You know, uh, sometimes you look uh, at the Muslims as a bad models because they are not following right Islam. This is not the way to, uh, you see, to judge, is it right? We have to judge according to the model which is the reference. And the people can be uh, some of good, some uh, time uh, not good, some time uh, some societies are uh, high level, uh, you see cultured and, and others and so on. The other things that uh, uh, we need these uh, dialogues and these meetings to clarify what is misunderstood uh, uh, or uh, some confusion about things and this is very uh, important to meet each other and to make some, some discussions and thanks to these uh, uh, questions and so on. The third thing is sometimes according to the uh, cultures we would like to make uh, what we can say narrow, narrowing of the gap between us. How? For example, I was in uh, Heathrow uh, Airport in London and uh, it was in uh, 2nd of January at 1979. Uh, uh, the snow is very, was very, very heavy and uh, a lot. So th the uh, authority of the airport declared that uh, it will, all the uh, uh, airport uh, flights will be, uh, all, uh, all the flights will be postponed for a few hours. I was with some uh, friends. We make some round and we, uh, yani, uh, we, it, 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 we, agreed. we agreed to read uh, in Quran and in some books and so on. Uh, some uh, American girls came to us. They were very astonished. Why you have some uh, brightness, some peace of mind? You are, you are very relaxed. All the people are disturbed, are uh, under tension. Why you are like this? We told them that we are Muslims. Oh, Muslims, they asked, what about women in Islam? This was some misunderstanding or some, 
confusion that we are uh, يعني we can we can say بنعامل we uh, 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 we told the, uh, them that we would like to give you one example in in Quran Allah subhanahu wa taala said قل للمؤمنين غضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكلهم the meaning that the believers the Muslim believers have to keep their eyes and not to look around for the woman and we, be, I, we believe as Muslims that this woman is, you see, walking in the street, it can be a, a mother for, my, for one of my uh, colleague, or can be a sister, or can be a wife, or can be a daughter. So look at all the society, even looking at and to try to have some uh, way of uh, enjoying of this is forbidden in Islam. Is it good or that you make everything with a woman in the underground and overground that you make what you can say love and so on? Uh, so s something that uh, you can say some misunderstanding because of the culture that you look at this as a freedom and look at this it is not the way uh, of uh, uh, explaining the freedom it is a, it's not a freedom for example of sex of a freedom of making the woman as something that is not uh, is not very high price if it not valuable it is used as models and uh, to be in uh, declaration uh, what to say in fil fil ilanat fil fil intervisement and so on so this can be something that you, uh, i have some uh, background from my point of view you have some gr uh, ground of your point of view by trying to uh, what you can say uh, and, and understand each other, you can accept my uh, 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 point of view, and also I, I can accept sometimes your point of view. And with this way, we, we, I think we can agree that we can meet in the uh, in the midway. I, I I hope that I clarify something. That okay. Any other questions? I, I'd like to ask a, a question. Um, my name is Matthew Sudnick. I'm um, come up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. My name is Matthew Sudnick. I'm um, uh, a history and religion teacher at a Catholic high school in Pittsburgh. And uh, first of all, I, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet and for welcoming us here. Um, and also, I, I feel it's important that for me to acknowledge that I am a Catholic and I teach at a Catholic school, and mindful that uh, people in my community have perpetuated some of these myths we're talking about, um, as high up as our Pope a few years ago, making a, a statement uh, that implied a connection between Islam and violence. Um, that's something that many of us are very embarrassed about, and I, I want to apologize um, for that. Um, my question is that um, within the Christian tradition and within the uh, prophets of the Hebrew Bible, um, just as there is some attention to uh, 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 love and tolerance, which we were talking about, um, there's also an emphasis in both of these texts uh, of the idea that God is on the side of those who are most afflicted. And in, in the Christian scriptures, uh, Jesus makes a point of this again and again. And in the prophets, and I think specifically the prophet Amos, there's a point that God is angry when people who are the most in need are afflicted. And I, I go through this with my students in class. Uh, that it says, you know, woe to you who oppress the weak and, and take advantage of the needy. And uh, I'm very interested in um, if there are sources like this in the Islamic tradition, that would be my first question, whether there are sources that articulate a concept like this. Uh, but also, um, and the second question, and maybe more importantly to me, is... Um, there are areas in which you know, we might not be able to agree on theological matters. But uh, do you think that there is a potential for Christians and Muslims to work together in this 
specific issue. Seeing, seeing God in such a way that we can work together um, on behalf of people who are really in need. Because I, I think that that's an essential part of the, my faith as I understand it. And I want to know if that's something that we can, we can share common ground on. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, actually, first of all, your apology is accepted. And, 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 uh, and uh, many Muslims, actually, uh, uh, if the brothers would allow me to comment for a second, uh, have been uh, also embarrassed by the Pope's uh, 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 word. But, but also, on, on behalf of Muslims, I can tell you, as a Muslim, that, 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 that I, I, in a part, in a part, I, I, I give the Pope an excuse for what he said, in a way, simply because, uh, and excuse me for saying that word, but, but, but I don't know if I can say it any other, he was ignorant of the true and, 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 and genuine teachings of Islam. Had he known now what Islam is about, he probably, and I'm sure, as a man of God, he would have never made that statement, you know. And, 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 and the reason he did not know much about Islam is, falls on our shoulders actually as Muslims because we did not convey the message of Islam as properly and as clearly and as genuinely as we should have you know so in a way you know uh, he was mistaken to do so as a man of his caliber but then again Muslims actually should should bear and, and you know some of the burden some of the responsibility for not being able actually to to to, to share with the world actually what what we believe as 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 a beautiful religion you know uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the brothers also uh, you know share some of the feelings about the Thank you for now. Nah. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, if you read about Islam, the start of Islam with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The starting was uh, uh, supporting w with the slaves, not with the sheriffs or, or with the, the those who are responsible. And the conflict was between those very weak people and the very strong people. This was the start of the uh, very start of Islam. And if you look at the story of Islam, especially at the first 10 years in Mecca, it was, uh, you see, uh, uh, what you can say, a period that uh, those people uh, suffered from those uh, who are the owners of the wealth and of the uh, decisions and so on. And if you look at, uh, all even, at very, very, uh, uh, you see, it's small things like, for example, kissing of uh, kinders, of, uh, of, uh, of child, children. Someone, uh, Bedouin from the Arab, uh, entered to uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu He was uh, kissing his uh, uh, grandfather. Hmm? Grandson. And one of those Bedouins say, oh, I have ten uh, sons. I haven't kissed any one of them. He told uh, Prophet Muhammad what I do if you have uh, losing the, uh, the mercy? 
and he said that the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء الرحمون يرحم الرحمن الرحمون يرحم الرحمن it means that those people has who has mercy and who are merciful for the uh, what you can say mankind Allah سبحانه وتعالى will uh, send mercy for them Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, one of his uh, message that Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in Quran وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين uh, we didn't send you except uh, only for mercy uh, and the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى when we start any chapter of Quran we say بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم by the name of uh, Allah, the merciful and the most delicious. Uh, so uh, if you look at what happened during uh, the story of our seerah, during li the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu most of the uh, life it was for those people who are, are very weak and who were very, uh, and even for those when we try to send the message to the others, even uh, to the other uh, countries, uh, it was that uh, uh, when you go to, for example, even during the uh, periods of war, no one killed child, killed woman, killed uh, this a scholar, uh, cut a tree, uh, uh, make any terrorism or make some uh, hero, uh, what, uh, hurry, hurry, hurry to uh, any uh, people. Don't uh, kill any one of these, only make uh, fighting with those who are soldiers and so on. If you look at this, and it is uh, not only sayings, there were very, very uh, straight uh, regulations for all the people. You will like that uh, it, uh, this uh, uh, in, in the uh, life of Prophet and his followers afterwards, we, we, you will find a lot. But I hope that uh, who would like to know uh, what is Islam, uh, I think that our right is to read our Islam from our sources, not from the sources that can be deviated. And you look at Islam from the point of view of the people who are uh, uh, not the believer of Islam. You can read from those and from others if you would like to make some uh, comparison. Then. But uh, I think the mercy and uh, the justice and the freedom uh, had a lot of uh, articles in Quran uh, and also in uh, Sunnah. Yani for example, uh, we say, uh, if you have me, uh, the Quran, please, uh, Surah to uh, Al Ma'un. Look, look at, for example, uh, the the relation Surah to Ma'un. The relation between belief, belief, and uh, the and the relation between uh, the behavior of the mankind. You can say Islam. Uh, you see, it's some kind of management. Uh, uh, you see, uh, by values management by values and also management by concentration for example in surah al maun uh, one chapter said uh, this in arabic araayta alladhi yukadhibu biddin okay fadhalika alladhi yad'u al-yatim wa la yahuddu ala ta'am al-miskin please uh, this chapter is have you seen him who denies the uh, recompense sah recompense recompense uh, uh, again uh, you are following me uh, you are listening to me. Uh, have you seen? Have you seen him who denies the recompense? That is he who repulses the orphan harshly and is not on the feeding of al miskin, the needy. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, so who to those performers a salat prayers? by, uh, what you say, high book trees, those who delay their salat, okay? those who, look, do good deeds only to be seen and withhold al maun small kindness like salt, sugar, water. Look, this one surah for this. If you look at Quran, uh, by this way, you will look and you will see a lot, maybe hundreds of verses that say that you have to, to look and to take care of those poor, of those weak, and, and make relation between the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day after, you see, and by this. An example, for example, uh, in Surah Al-Haqqa, uh, it is the last, uh, you see, explanation. خلاص أنا حاوف عشان صلت العشاء. Oh, uh, 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 look, for example, those who are uh, 
uh, uh, they after were uh, uh, we keep punished because of their of their uh, bad uh, you see what uh, you say behavior. Uh, look what 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 Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said uh, when He said that uh, uh, that uh, in in uh, in this who uh, but as for him who uh, will be given uh, his record in the left hand will say I wish that I had not been given my record. Okay. And so on. At the end, what Allah said, why? Why, why uh, uh, this uh, was the, uh, uh, what, Masiru'i? Uh, his, his uh, 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 look and uh, this, verily, he used not to believe in Allah, the most great, and erred not on the feeling of feeding of al miskin the needy. Look, yani, he make linking between he didn't believe in Allah and he didn't help the needy. Look at it. This, this something of belief. For example, Al Rasulullah said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhir, fala yu'zi jara. Those or that who is believing in Allah and day after, he has not to make in uh, any hurts to his neighboring. You see? Uh, look, w uh, some uh, woman, woman was very very active in praying and in fasting but she was not good with a cat a cat uh, it, it was make some uh, look and no food no water nothing at all uh, it was mentioned to a rasul he said in arabic لا خير في ولا معنى الكلام أنه لا no meaning of her prayers and her fasting she is in the well in Jahannam in the hell fire but another one you see it was that ليه الست العهرة أو المومس ما ها هكر a woman woman was 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 uh, was sexy and so on she was very thirsty in the desert you see and she was very very thirsty they took uh, her shoes they take the water and she she look at a, a dog and look at him he suffered like what she suffered she tried and she was uh, and, and making herself that it can be uh, uh, harmed because can uh, yeah. she took this and they took and they make you see what we can say huh? uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to Prophet Muhammad sallam that Allah forgive her because of this forgive her look at this meaning and these stories of Prophet Muhammad sallam it is not from another body you see a lot of behaviors a lot of stories if you look at even Please, if you have some, even some uh, summary of uh, what is called a life of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will find more than 70 or 80 percent of this life about mercy and about uh, that he can accept even the behavior of the people who uh, are not understanding or, uh, uh, you see, down cultured. For example, a Bedouin in a, the mosque, he would like to make uh, a bowl. <laughs> in the mosque he does this in the mosque all the followers of Muhammad oh, and he would like to take he told them Prophet Muhammad leave him to complete completely what he's doing because if, if you don't like this you will make some problems you will make dirty for his clothes and for the place and it is not good from the uh, healthy point of view you see to cut his uh, uh, to, to interrupt it. After finishing this, what he said, uh, this, this Bedouin man, Allahum marhamni wa muhammadan wa la tarham ma'ana ahadan. This is a, a dua. He asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send mercy to himself and to Prophet Muhammad and no other body. <laughs> no other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Rasul he said, Oh, laqad haggarta wa sa'an. You make narrowing of what thing is which is very wide. Look at even at this. Somebody was taking Prophet Muhammad from his, you see, neck and make that like this and make something like this. And he looked, he's smiling. 
the people, the followers, try to tempt him. No, let them. He may uh, have something to uh, express. This is the way of expression of that man who is uh, coming from the desert. This example is a lot, a lot, a lot in the uh, message of uh, Islam. I think that I hope that I can uh, explain, uh, I could explain uh, what uh, about. Is it clear for a question? About, about the cooperation between uh, Muslims and others, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during his, uh, his message, he said that uh, if somebody uh, called me to what's called health al-fudul, this something it was in uh, before Islam, some agreement with all the society of uh, uh, this uh, uh, island, Arabic island, which is Saudi Arabia now, uh, it was uh, an agreement that nobody make uh, suffer from uh, a zulm, uh, from oppression. And nobody, uh, it, 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 we have to, we have to get him his right if somebody uh, takes the right from. He said that if anybody at any time that called me to make like this, I am welcoming. You see? And now we are welcoming any society or any uh, people that would like to make some cooperation for the needs of the mankind or the poor uh, people or uh, those uh, weak uh, mankind. Thank you. Since it was the tradition of uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace uh, be upon him, to uh, work with others, uh, I think this is a very strong invitation that we as human beings uh, can work uh, on what is really good for the rest of humanity. And there are lots of projects we really don't have at the end of the day to agree, uh, especially on theological matters. But it is very important if we can work on, on, on projects that can relieve those who are suffering in different parts of the world so that people can feel the mercy and the kindness of Muhammad and Jesus and all other prophets of God. Thank you.